Hi, I am Jay Pomeroy, a Principal Landscape Architect out of the Golden Valley office. Fun fact, um, synthetic turf is made out of grass fibers, polyethylene, but more importantly, the infill is made out of millions of rubber tires that are ground up into little granules. Makes it a, uh, a wonderful spot to, to play football on, soccer on, lacrosse on. What are some ways sports facilities are becoming more, more environmentally, environmentally sustainable? sustainable? Crunch time, crunch time. The refillable water things <laughs> that I see all over the place, that's probably pretty basic, but I know when I was growing up we didn't have those, so I would think that that's a way that they're helping the environment, is not having everybody have all these plastic bottles. No, Janelle, you're close, but no. Uh, environmentally sustainable on the synthetic turf front. Um, initial construction, they're taking, again, millions of tires off the roadway, out of landfills. Once the field has lived its life, that's really where the sustainability is going to start to um, change over even the next few years. There's a real push by some of the, um, uh, the turf companies to go to zero waste. What are the current influences in multi-purpose field design? More and more these days, we're getting pushed to become more multi-purposed in our designs of athletic facilities. For instance, pickleball is being repurposed on tennis courts. Turf fields that might have once been used specifically for soccer and football for community purpose are now being striped or turfed around the perimeter for walking trails. So the multi-purpose side of it goes from young kids all the way up to grandparents crossing those boundaries to serve even more people. How have you seen school design change due to the increase in hybrid learning? Yeah, recently, um, again, whether it's COVID-based or um, indirectly, directly, we are seeing a real push to increase the student drop-off parent queuing lanes and taking away from the bus corrals, that may very well change kind of job security. And so now we're being tasked by any number of our school clients, um, how do we address this? How do we increase the length of our queue lanes so that parents aren't backed up into the streets? Well, I lied. I have one question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is a key strategy to ensure equitable engagement in urban planning? Making sure there's any number of people involved in the conversation. I think we do a good job as, as planners, designers, to hopefully invite the right people to the party. Um, but urban planning obviously involves any number of different factions, different folks, different, different age groups. Um, and so hoping to get that cross-section equitable engagement from those people that are in, effort, in essence going to be using those facilities. Um, crossing those boundaries and, and getting engagement from any number of different uh, parties as you, as you move ahead. That's the fact. <laughs>